Dear devotees, this week we're going to continue looking at the Leelas of Shri Krishna as described in Srimad Bhagavat Mahapuran. These Leelas are very special, very valuable. Developing a liking for the Leelas of Radha and Krishna is the goal of all spiritual practices. It's the essence of everything. It's also a good sign of progress, meaning the more pure one's heart is, the more we love to hear the Leelas of Radha and Krishna. And when we do hear them or think about them or read them, we feel the effect of those Leelas in our heart. There's a power in them. Feeling that is a sign that we've made some progress on the devotional path. It means we're starting to taste a little bit of the ras that is impregnated in those lilas. Those lilas are blissful. We experience them to the extent that our heart and mind are joined with Shri Krishna. To the extent of our surrender, we can experience the ras in those leelas. In the beginning, we need to understand intellectually what is the importance of the leelas. Eventually, we'll start to experience their importance for ourselves. You see, the Leelas are a cure-all for everything, all our problems. But che log, kya ho raha hai? Sit facing the front and listen properly. We all know that we suffer from many ailments in this world. You can call it personality problems. We all have them. You can call it ailments of the mind. We're all familiar with them. Anger, jealousy, fear, dishonesty, kapat, chal, desire. All of these things, they both torment us and they lead to us doing wrong things and saying wrong things. Everybody suffers from these ailments and everybody wishes to overcome them because they cause us a lot of problems in our life. And there are many upai there are many means of addressing these problems. Tulsi Dasji says, Bhe shaj puni ko tina kariya rujana jahi hariyan. These problems will never fully go away until someone develops bhakti in their heart. You can say that the cure for all of our mental problems and all of our suffering is already lying within our heart as the seed of bhakti, the seed of love for Radha Krishna. It's in everybody's heart. Because you are a divine soul and you're related to Radha Krishna and they're, with, they're within you. You're not separate from them or apart from them but you don't feel that connection with them. 
because of the pollution of the heart. So we need to, all we need to do is develop that bhakti in our heart. The means of doing that is the grace of Guru, the grace of a rasik saint, following the teachings of how to practice bhakti, meaning sadhana bhakti. In here, there's a seed of, you can say, divine bhakti. But we have to practice sadhana bhakti in order to uncover that and let it bloom. Listening to Shri Krishna's leelas is part of this process. Simply by listening to the leelas faithfully, the heart is purified. If one doesn't wish to listen to the leelas, okay, there are some other ways of reaching that point. It's said that one should serve a divine saint and through serving that saint eventually you'll develop the desire to hear Shri Krishna's Leelas. And by continuing to serve that saint and listen to the Leelas, your heart will be purified and then all the problems will go away. Nowadays, we have intermediate measures that we take in this world, like going to a psychiatrist or a psychologist, getting some therapy, reading some self-help books, taking some medication. Depression is another problem many people struggle with. So we have all these intermediate measures in this world, but the ultimate cure lies within. There's nothing wrong with making use of these intermediate measures to help you manage these personality problems. But none of those will result in a permanent cure or in you reaching a state of perfection. Only developing love for Radha Krishna, only bhakti is the cure. Raghupati bhakti Tulsidas Ji says, Devotion is the ultimate cure for all the mental ailments. So if you want to see that my reactions have reduced, now I don't get as angry when someone, when I feel that someone has done something that they shouldn't have, they embarrassed me, they insulted me. If you want that your reaction to that situation is less, or you become more in control of that, you feel more at peace, more happy, you feel the presence of Radha Krishna, one magical cure for all of that. Radha Krishna Leelas. Listen to them, think about them. Leela includes everything. Nam, Roop, Leela, Guna, Dham, Jan. It's all one. God, His names, His forms, His abodes, His attributes, His Jan, His divine associates, and of course His Leelas. They're all one. So when we say Leelas, it means also the form, His personality, His abode. It includes all of those. The Leela is a very easy way to bring all of that into our mind because there's something happening that draws our attention. We want to know what happened next. What's the situation? We want to follow the story of what's happening so it engrosses our mind. And before we know it, you'll be walking down the street and Radhe, Radhe, Radhe will be going on in your heart inside and you'll say, where did that come from? I wasn't even doing that consciously. Or you'll be doing some work, maybe cleaning your kitchen and you'll feel like Radha Krishna are with you. You don't feel alone. You feel something in your heart like, like a love, a belonging. You feel like, where did that come from? What did I do to deserve this? (laughs) 
the truth is we get a lot more than what we put in hum log jitna karte hain na jitni sadhana karte hain usse bahut adhik milta hai guru ki kripa se bhagwan ki kripa se humko bahut zyada milta hai thodi si sadhana karne se bahut zyada kripa milti hai so a little bit of effort from us constant effort regular effort even a small of a small amount results in slowly but surely our antahakaran becoming more and more pervaded with the grace of radha krishna their leelas their names just going on in our heart and in our mind all the time this purifies us our mind and our body purifies us inside and outside and makes you know to put it simply it makes your life better if your mind is clean if your heart is happy life is good then you can deal with what happens in your life so this is truly a cure all it's the divine magic potion for all of our problems it's up to us to imbibe these leelas into our heart and mind and gradually we can feel the effect of them today i'm going to continue where i had left off before when we were discussing ras panchadhyayi and the maharas leela of radha and krishna at that time shri krishna was 8 years old the next leela that is told <clears throat> is something that happened on shivratri on shivratri nand baba shri krishna's father and all the gopis they decided they were going to go to ambika van and worship bhagwan shiv ji and ambika parvati so they loaded up all their bel gadi all their bullock carts with all the samagri they would need for doing puja and they invited everybody and they all joyously went off towards ambika van for doing shiv ji's puja This Ambika Van is quite near to Nandgaon where at this time Shri Krishna and his family were living. I've described for you before the general layout of that area of Vraj. Nandgaon and south from Nandgaon by about 6 miles is Barsana. In between lies Prem Sarovar and a hill a tiny village called sanket where shri krishna used to signal radha rani that i'm on the way i'm almost there further south from barsana is govardhan hill kusum sarovar radha kund etc so in that area near nandgaon there is a forest called ambika van ambika is of course a name of parvati a name of durga it is also known in this uh, in association with another story this ambika van that kirti maiya noticed that radha was leaving every day and going somewhere she said uh, where are you going every day lali lali said i go to ambika van because it's near nandgaon she used to go there and meet shri krishna oh mother i go to ambika van what do you do there why oh, worship goddess ambika there was no temple over there of gauri no temple of ambika no murti or anything but radha rani said you know i went over i go over there and i worship goddess ambika kirti maiya said main bhi chalti hu i'll go along with you today we'll both go and worship ambika ma 
राधा रानी चले हाँ चलो 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 फिर चल दे गो सो वेन दे रीच देर देर इज अ स्मॉल मंदिर ऑफ अंबिका देवी एंड अ ब्यूटिफुल मूर्ति एंड किशोरी जी एंड हर मदर कीर्ति मैया दे डिड पूजन एंड हैप्पली वेन बैक so later that day when radha rani met shri krishna she told him the story and she said i don't know where this uh, where did this mandir come from and where did this beautiful murti come from so shri krishna explained that i knew what was happening so i myself came and took the form of ambika devi so that's a famous mandir now near nandgaon where people go even today you can go and worship Durga Maya in this form which is actually Shri Krishna who took the form of Ambika Devi. So it was in this Ambika van van means forest <clears throat> where Nanda Baba and the other gopis decided to go and worship Shivji that day that night. So they went and they had a big ceremony over there and they also called many brahmans and donated a lot of cows and gold and clothing to them and they had a big feast so they fed all the brahmans and uh, at that time in those days saraswati river was not flowing underground saraswati river was flowing above ground and she went right through ambikavan so they were actually on the bank of saraswati river Oh, Nanda Baba and all those gopis, they were fasting on that day. So they just had some water and happily went to sleep there in the forest. There happened to be a huge python living in that forest, a big ajgar. <clears throat> and that ajgar came and grabbed a hold of Nanda Baba as he was sleeping. and started to swallow him whole that's what pythons do right they grab a hold of you and squeeze you and then they just start swallowing doesn't matter how big you are even if you're a goat or a crocodile or something you can swallow the whole thing so they this huge python started swallowing nanda baba so he started yelling oh krishna krishna oh my son help help he was yelling for krishna of course that woke up all the other gopis and they saw nanda baba is like half swallowed by this huge python so the fire was still burning they all took big sticks burning sticks out of the fire and started beating on that big python and hitting him and trying to burn him with the fire it didn't matter this python was set on getting darshan of shri krishna tonight he knew if he let go of nanda baba thakur ji wouldn't have to come so he held on for dear life sure enough shri krishna came and all he did was he took his charan and he touched that ajgar so with the touch of his lotus feet that being who had been cursed to take the form of this ajgar he was released from that form and he actually took on a beautiful human like form it's a type of being called vidyadhar they're also actually attendants of god shiv and they're celestial beings you can say they live in the lower uh, abodes of swarg like kinnar etc they're also beings created by brahma they're they have celestial bodies so they're extremely beautiful when you hear of oh you know from when shri krishna does any leela and from the heavens they shower down flowers those vidyadhar are part of that gang that showers down the flowers and cheers on shri krishna so everybody was amazed by his beauty it was just like every ang of his body was divinely beautiful and glowing so he saw shri krishna and he went and did pranam and stood in front of him and shri krishna said 
who are you? And you know, you're inhabiting such a beautiful form now. Who are you and why were you in that other form? There must have been some situation that led to you being in that form. So now this Vidyadhar explained that my name is Sudarshan and I was cursed. Yes, I'm very beautiful and I was also very wealthy and I had my aerial chariot and I used to just fly around wherever I want and one day I saw some rishis these rishis were part of Angira Gotra and they were very ugly so seeing them I started making fun of them I was mocking their ugliness feeling I'm so beautiful and I'm so wealthy and just flying around wherever I want so those rishis cursed me to take this awful form as an ajgar but it was only their grace it was their pure kripa that they gave me this form to live in because they knew that one day I would get your darshan he says you know just by your darshan alone the curse was lifted and then with the touch of your foot all of my past sins were burnt to ashes and now I can experience your divine bliss he says when your devotees just by chanting your name and anyone who hears the chanting of that name all of their sins are burnt then what to say of someone who directly re receives the touch of your divine charan Shri Krishna's form his whole form is divine every part of his body is divine but there's something extra special about his charan you can say that there's like a waves of bliss and graciousness coming emanating from Shri Krishna but they're more concentrated in his charan that's the way it is Sri Maharajji says, he always refers to this Leela of Sri Krishna. Karar vindena padar vindam mukhar vinde vinivesayantam. Markandeya Muni, when he had spent so long in the endless ocean and finally got the vision of Bal Mukund. Shri Krishna on that vatka ped ke bhot bade patte he was lying on that big leaf and what was he doing? he had his lotus toe in his lotus hand and with his lotus mouth he was sucking on his big toe so Maharajji says even Shri Krishna wants to take the ras of his own charan it's so special this is a form of bhakti just doing rup dhyan of Shri Krishna's divine charan savedadhatu padvim parasya durantaviryasya rathang paane Yo Mayaya Santataya Nuvritya Bhajit Tat Pada Saroja Gandham Shri Krishna's lotus feet Pada Saroj Saroj means lotus, Pad means his feet. The one who is dedicated to those lotus feet, Pada Saroj Gandham, they even have a divine fragrance greater than a lotus, greater than any fragrance of this world. So the one who is Amayaya, 
without worldly desires, santatayanuvritya bhajet, who engrosses his mind all the time in thinking of Shri Krishna's lotus feet, saveda dhatu. He knows Shri Krishna in reality. Naya matma pravachanena labhyo name dhaya nabahuna shrutena yame vaisha vrunute tena labhyas tasyaisha atma vibrunute tanu gvam swam. Kathopanishad says that God can't be known through any kind of intellectual practice, study, listen to lectures, debate about it. None of this will result in you knowing God because God is unlimited. The only thing we can do is measure the extent of our intellect. We can't measure the extent of God. If you're on a body of water and that body of water has no bottom, it goes its depth is unfathomable. And you go out in a boat and you have a, a stick that's maybe a yard stick, a meter stick. So you put that in the water. Are you measuring the depth of the water? No. You can, you can say, you can hold it up and say, look everybody, the ocean is this deep. लेकिन आप समुद्र की गहराई नहीं बता रहे हैं आप अपने जो मीटर स्टिक है उसकी लंबाई बता रहे हैं। So we try to say God is like this, God is like that. We can only tell as far as the extent of our intellect. Naham nayuyam yadritangatim vidur Navam deva kimuta pare sura Tanmaya mohita buddhayastvidam Vinirmitam chatma samam prachakshmahe Brahma is saying to Naradji, Narad. I can't know the extent of Shri Krishna. You can't know the extent of Shri Krishna. Shivji can't know the extent of Shri Krishna. Vidurji can't know the extent of Shri Krishna. Sanakadik Paramahans can't know the extent of Shri Krishna. All we can do is exercise our intellect to its full extent and then it fails and we've only shown the extent of our intellectual prowess, we haven't shown anything about God's, who God is in actuality. In other words, it's impossible to know God. Koi bhi bhagwan ko jaan ni sakta. Brahma bhi narad ji bhi. Lekin, yadi hum log bhakti ke dwara apne man ko samarpit kar dete hain, tab Ham jaan sakte hain, unki kripa se, ham jaan sakte hain. So if we surrender to Shri Krishna's lotus feet, if we worship his lotus feet, then through his grace, he will make himself known to us. Shravanam kirtanam vishno smaranam padasevanam Archanam vandanam dasyam sakhyamatmani vedanam. Bhagavatam tells that one of the ways of worshipping Shri Krishna is padasevanam. We don't have him sakchat in front of us right now, so we have to serve him. Padasevanam means serving his lotus feet. If we don't have him right here physically where we can touch him and see him, how will we serve his lotus feet? Through Rup Dhyan. When we close our eyes and we see Shri Krishna, we can give him a massage. We can press his lotus feet. We can do Charan 
sparsh, just lightly touch. We can wash his lotus feet in some nice warm scented water and we can drink that charanamrit afterwards. The water we have here, everyone calls it charanamrit, right? You go to the mandir and the water that's available there, the holy water, everybody, sabhi bolte, aye charanamrit hai. But do we ever think, what is charan amrit? The nectar of Shri Krishna's, of Guruji's lotus feet. That's charan amrit. So we should think if we take that water, that this is water that has washed Shri Krishna's feet, Radharani's feet. And then even a drop of that you get in, we always have a little spoon, right? You get in a little spoon and take it. That's charan amrit. So we can worship Shri Krishna through Rup Dhyan, just thinking of his lotus feet. Then we get the same effect, we can get the exact same effect that Sudarshan got. Sudarshan ji had Shri Krishna come directly to him and touch him with his lotus feet. We can touch Shri Krishna's feet in our mind and when that happens, for real, a hundred percent, then Shri Krishna will come to us. All of our sins will also be burnt when our mind makes contact with his lotus feet. So Sudarshan explained who he was and what his story was to Shri Krishna and took his agya, asked for permission to go back to his celestial abode and did parikrama of Shri Krishna, did pranam and left. Now, all the Brajwasis who had witnessed this, they were amazed by the whole event that happened that night. And they happily then finished their Shiv Poojan and packed up and singing about Shri Krishna's Leelas and Gunas, they made their way back towards Nandagao. Sometime after that, it happened that Shri Krishna and Balram in the late afternoon or early evening were with the gopis. There are all different kinds of leelas. In some of them, Shri Krishna is with all the brajwasis, like when he was with Nanda Baba and all the gopis. Sometimes he's just with the gopis. This Madhuri Abhav Leela with the gopis is very sweet. It was, as I said, late afternoon, early evening. They're out in a beautiful forest, woodland. And they're just all enjoying Shri Krishna's divine association, his company. So, as it starts to get a little dark, the stars start coming out, the moon rises, and it's shining brightly in the sky. Gopis during this time, they're all singing. They're so joyous being around Krishna and Balram, they're just singing about Krishna's divine attributes. So the whole air is full of their singing. And night falls, the moon comes out, there are still bumblebees buzzing around here and there that are intoxicated with the fragrance of the night-blooming jasmine, Bela. So the whole night is also, the whole atmosphere is permeated by this fragrance of jasmine and the bumblebees are kind of bumbling around <laughs> intoxicated with this fragrance. And the breeze is also carrying the fragrance of those lotus flowers on the nearby ponds that also happen to bloom at night. In this beautiful atmosphere, Krishna and Balram also start to sing. So now gopis are singing the main melody and Krishna and Balram start doing a lap. They start adding very fancy 
flowing notes going up and coming down and they're singing in complete synchronicity. Krishna and Balram are singing exactly together. So gopis are singing the main melody and Krishna and Balram are singing all kinds of fancy alankar. It was such a sound, the sound of their voice, the sound of this singing that filled the minds and ears of all living beings who heard it with anand. So the gopis were also so overcome with joy hearing this that they lost their body consciousness. So they didn't even notice if like their chunari fell off or the braid came undone and all the flowers were coming out of the, her hair. They were completely oblivious to all of this. So just imagine any time you need to do rup dhyan, you can also think of sitting with Krishna and the gopis sometime in the late evening as it's starting to get dark and what would the sound of Shri Krishna's voice be like as he joined in the singing. So on this night this Leela took another twist because somebody came Shankachur he was a yuck actually not a not a demon but a yaksh a follower of Kuber the material god of wealth so probably also thinking this is a good chance to uh, meet my divine Lord Shri Krishna but he came in a naughty way and scooped up all the gopis right in front of Krishna and Balram and raced off with them. Just like some daku would come and, you know, run off with something. He just came up, scooped up all those gopis and raced off. Krishna and Balram were right there, I mean right in front of them. So they both started racing after him and gopis are yelling ha krishna come and help us so in no time at all they caught up and they had picked up some big tree and they were holding it like a club like that so as soon as he saw krishna and balram have come in front of him like uh, death personified he dropped all the gopis and ran for his life so Balram stayed with the gopis to protect them and Shri Krishna followed him. So wherever he was racing, Krishna was hot on his tail. And he was thinking because this yaksh had a chura mani, a beautiful big jewel on his head, like embedded in his head. That's how he was. There are some beings like that as well. So Krishna was thinking, I'm going to get that jewel out of his head. So he chased him and in no time he caught up to him and got a hold of him and with one punch wo chura mani bhi alag ho gaya wo pura sir bhi alag ho gaya <laughs> khatam ho gaya shankh chur so anyway i'm sure that's what he wanted that's the whole reason why he came he wanted to meet his divine master in that way and be sent to the divine abode by shri krishna in that way so these are just a couple of the Leelas, Shri Krishna's Leelas are infinite in number, there's no end to them and whatever is described in the Bhagavatam is just a few of the main Leelas that happened along the way. So these are a couple of the ones that are described after the Maharas Leela. Following this we get an insight into one of Shri Krishna's special attributes called Murali Madhuri. As Almighty God, Shri Krishna doesn't reveal his entire personality. As Shri Ram, he is revealing almost all of his personality. But there are four special qualities 
which he only reveals as Shri Krishna. Prema Madhuri, Rupa Madhuri, Leela Madhuri, and Murali Madhuri. A special power of Shri Krishna's flute. So this special power of his flute is beautifully described in something called Yugal Geet. The gopis are speaking amongst each other and they describe the special effect of Shri Krishna's flute. You've all heard about Shri Krishna's flute, but tomorrow you'll get to hear how the gopis describe the effect of that flute when Shri Krishna plays it in Braj. And after that, unfortunately, it tells how Kants sends Akrur to Braj. So that day is coming when Krishna and Balram will leave Braj and go to Mathura, telling gopis, Ki, Abhi aayenge, kal hi aayenge. So we'll get to hear this part of the Leela also, which is actually very important. Shri Krishna leaving Braj also reveals the depth of the love that the Brajwasis had for Shri Krishna and that Shri Krishna had for the Brajwasis. It also led to the Uddha Leela when Uddha was sent. And the greatest Jnani of that time was schooled by the gopis and he realized the smallness of his knowledge. So all these leelas are coming up and many more. So you can join us tomorrow when we continue. Bolie Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki